So the business itself, just to be clear on this, if I'm working at a company right now, my job is to do my job and do it the best I can, and then I'll make some income. But you're saying if you're buying a franchise or if you're becoming a franchisee, you're really uh, almost finding the right vehicle yeah. that's designed to get you from point A to point B. You've, you've helped put thousands of people in successful franchises over the years. Um, do, do you find that a lot of people have even given up on those goals? Absolutely. In fact, most people believe that because they have these insecurities and these fears about making the transition and they can't even deal with the idea of being self-employed, it scares them to death that they feel that I'm likely not well suited or right for owning my own franchise. We help them with a, with a process with the U2.0 that helps them, look, helps them look at the dangers, opportunities, and strengths that tens of thousands of our clients have shared with us so they can relate that it's okay you feel that way now. So if somebody's watching this right now and they have a job just over broke, they're, they're going, well, if I stay here, I'm not gonna achieve my uh, lifestyle goals. Not going to make the wealth I deserve. Not going to build any equity. Oh, well, you know, if I if I retire, I can't like sell my job exactly. like I could a sell a business. And I'm not going to. Um, that's normal. I mean, this is. It's absolutely normal. Okay, and so that someone who's watching this might be having an epiphany, going, "That's me. This is this is normal. This it's is part of the perfectly process." Perfectly normal. Okay, well, so we're going on to big question number two. Do you have what it takes emotionally? <laughs> now, Terry, what kind of emotional makeup? Does someone need to succeed as a franchise owner in your mind? I mean, you talked about sweaty palm syndrome. So yes. what kind of emotional makeup does somebody need to have to deal with sweaty palm syndrome, start a business, that whole deal? Well, the emotional factor is a big one because a lot of what holds us back has to do with these underlining emotions related to how we've become programmed to see all the red flags and warning signs and signals when we are asked to move out of our comfort level. But we know, that we know the aspect of continuing to do what you do and expecting different results, that's the definition of insanity. Yeah. So we know we want to move on, but we're always holding on to our current comfort level. So emotionally, it's going to require you to look at things differently from what you've done in the past and only focus on the possibilities that exist that you're not currently aware of. The good news is everything we're excited about today or comfortable or enjoy, we didn't know we would until after we experienced it. So by experiencing this next 2.0 level, the emotional aspect is just being open to the fact that you're going to be temporarily uncomfortable. So Terry, just give me an example, because in your book you give the example, and I don't want to steal your thunder, but you give an example about learning to golf for the first time. How, how, how does learning to golf for the first time relate to you know, learning whether a, you know, starting a business is right for you? Well, it's a, it's a great analogy because learning to do anything or experiencing anything we haven't experienced before is exactly what you're going to go through in embracing the idea of being self-sufficient, taking control of your destiny. So in life, we have all these things that we're currently embracing and comfortable with and actually love and enjoy that we didn't know we would until after we experienced them. For some unknown reason, when we leave corporate America or the job market to go experience on our own, yeah. we don't take those experiences of being OK, being temporarily uncomfortable, into the idea of being self-sufficient. It's the fear of being self-employed that kind of holds us back. I think one thing I deal with a lot when I work with business owners, now you've coached thousands of people. Now I'm a guy who I'm kind of like a, I work with you know 10 people at a time or 15, but you've worked with thousands. You've seen this so much more than I have. But I think a lot of people, they start to feel a little guilty, almost like they're not being a, a, a team player to mm -hmm. desire more. You know, they're at the job and they're like, I'm never gonna get where I want to go here. But it's too scary to think about what would happen if I quit, so they get kind of stuck in that zone. And I think that's where you really help people is to discover that desire. And Napoleon Hill has this quote. He says, uh, Napoleon Hill, for anybody watching this who doesn't know, he's best-selling self-help author of all time. And he says, the starting point of all achievement is desire. Absolutely. In your mind, have you seen this statement proved to be true where somebody has no idea about how to anything about a franchise, yes. and yet they just had a desire and they were able to be successful? Yes, it's, it's, it's the desire we refer to as possibilities, options, and dreams. You know, that's really the foundation of what we discovered 30 years ago and help people to be able to explore business ownership through franchising in a safe space. But it's, it's really the idea of embracing a desire that you have that's like a grain of sand that's embedded in us that continually irritates us from time to time that says there's got to be a better way. But you know, it, the, the, the frequency of the irritation depends on what's going on in the job market, what's going on at home, how our finances are. Yeah. So it kind of goes up and down. But that's the desire. That grain of sand is that desire to be self-sufficient, that possibilities, options, and dreams 
grain of sand that's going to continually irritate. And if we get irritated enough, it turns into a pearl. I think that's the idea, right? Yeah, the idea is that we know that in, in nature that uh, pearls come from a grain of sand embedded into an oyster. And over time, with irritation, that becomes a pearl.